Hey everyone, this is a Crypto Sellers channel. Today I want to tell you how to configure the testing node XLR network. First of all, we need to run the server. According to the official XLR network guide, it should correspond to the following requirements 16 CPU cores, 16 GB of RAM, and 1.5 TB of the disk space. But please note, this requirement for the mainnet node, so for the testing node, we can run the simple virtual machine of the Hessner platform. I would like to recommend using a virtual machine with 4 CPU cores, 8 GB RAM and 116 GB of the disk space. So let's open the documentation page and choose a section manual setup. Here you can find the steps which describe how to perform the installation process. Also I will show you how to install the correct and latest versions of the software. Open the SSH console and type the sudo apt update and, and sudo apt upgrade commands to update the list of available packages in the server and upgrade the packages which have been installed on your server. Ok, once the update process has been completed, copy the following command from the documentation and run it in console. As we can see, the command has been completed successful. So move on to the next step. Create the necessary directories and download binary file using the wget command. But please note, during record of this video, I have noticed that the version of AxelRD binary file is outdated, so we need to change it to the latest one. For this, please open official Axelar GitHub page to check the latest release of the software. As you can see, the latest version is 0.17.0. So, let's download Axelar binary file for our Linux version. For this, click the right button of the mouse and select the line, the copy link address. Then open the SSH console, enter wget command and paste the link address that you copied on the previous step and click enter. In the next step, please download tfnd file. For this, copy the command and paste it into the console. Then we need to rename the binary file, which we have already downloaded. But do not forget to change the version, because as you remember, we are using the latest one. The next command we copies without changes. Checking the XLR version, as you can see, it looks correct. Doing the same for the T4D file. And it looks correct also. That's great. After this, we need to generate two keys. It will be broadcaster and validator. Firstly, we will generate broadcaster key. Please set the password and repeat it. Once the command has been completed successfully, you should get the mnemonic phrase. Please do not provide it to someone else, you should save it in the safe place. Just select all text in the console and pass it to the file to which only you will have access. Do the same for the validator key. Set the password and save the mnemonic phrase also. Creating tfnd file.
enter the command and set the password. According to the documentation, our TFND secret mnemonic file is located in the .tfnd export directory. So, we need to save it to a safe place and remove it for security reasons. Copy the next command and set environment variables. Copy the next command, but you need to change it and set your node name. For this, you need to change the monikem variable from the default to testnet XLR, for example. Set the next variable validator operator address. Just click enter. You need to use the validator password which you said before to complete the command. Do the same to the broadcaster address. Click enter and set the password which you said before. Copy the next command. Just set a password, sorry. And enter to apply it. Do the same for another one. Copy the next command. Please note. We need to set carrying password before applying it. This is the same password that you used for the broadcaster key. We need to set it for the systemd file. It is necessary to prevent storing the real password in the text mode. Apply our changes. Move on to the configuration setup and copy the first command, paste it in the console. Downloading configuration files uh, using wget command. After this, we need to sync the note from the snapshot. Perform quick sync. As you can see, the downloading process of the snapshot is in progress. On the right side shows the ETA is 2 minutes, so let's wait. The sync process has been completed, so let's start our node. Sorry, just forgot to apply the latest command. Copy, paste, enter. So let's create the file for the XLRD service. Copy other variables. Please note you need to change the user variable to root because we will run our service as root user.
copy the latest part of the options and paste it to the console add our service to the startup creating tofund service file add it to the startup also and do the same to the world service just copy and paste it to the console and add world service to the startup run the command to read the system ctl configuration and start all services which we created before Using the set command to change the variable from outer to persistence, it needs to receive the detailed logging information and restarting systemd journal service to apply changes. Copy the first command and uh, let's see logs for the XLRD service. As you can see, the sync process is in progress and all look fine. Open the XLR telemetry page to see what the lattice block is. As you can see, it is 1,632,000. And once the node will be synced, you should see the same value in your log. So you just need to wait once the sync process has been completed. Let's uh, check the logs for other services just uh, interrupt the output of the previous command and uh, paste the second to the console and as we can see the tfone d service works fine also so let's check the latest one command and as you can see the wall service looks fine so all looks good While the node is singing, I will describe to you two explorers which we will be using for monitoring our node. The first one, this is XLR page from Big Deeper. Here you can find all active validators, how many tokens in the bond and delegation they have and their commission. Also, you can see the inactive validator on another page. So if you want, you can use this explorer or as another option you can use official explorer from xlr network it looks the same but in the active validators you can see the active rpc nodes also i will show you in the next video how to configure each rpc node and connect it to your main net node also you can see the active validator at this time active set will contain only 15 validators to be a part of, set, of this set, you need to have enough tokens. Voting power means how many tokens you have in the self bond and how tokens take to you. The minimum count of the tokens should be 3000 to token. So you can use your own tokens or get them from the team to get into the active set. When we create our own validator XLR testnet, by default we will fall into an inactive set, but this should be enough to show that our node works fine. While our node is syncing, we can do the next step and get XLR tokens on the wallet which we created before. Please note, if you want, you can export these wallets to the Kepler using the mnemonic phrase. Let's use the broadcaster wallet and get the test tokens. Just copy, sending, and uh, we should get the six token which we will use for our needs. So let's do the same for the validator address. Just need copy, paste, send me tokens and uh, we should get the tokens to our address and uh, forgot to mention 
uh, we will use these tokens uh, to perform the next command because if you don't have them uh, you will get the fail okay let's get back to the synchronization process so you have the two ways how to check the synchronization status the first way you just can to open the service journal and check the lattice block in the console. Another option is to use the curl command and get the service status. If you see that the catching up value shows false, this means that the node has been synced successful. Back to the our documentation and register broadcaster proxy. Just copy the command and uh, pass it to the console. Enter the password, waiting, and as you can see, the command has been completed successfully. Move on to the final step and create a validator. The first value which you can change is identity, but you can skip this option. It needs if you want to get an avatar in Explorer. By default, you will have a colorful ball. To get the unique identity, you need to upload it to the key base and then get it from it. So, I believe it is clear for you. And uh, the next options which we need to set, this is amount. Just uh, copy it and uh, but to console and uh, edit it so we need to set the value if we delegate five tokens it should be five million uh, please note uh, each token on the node is shown as like million that's mean two tokens 2 million 10 tokens 10 million uh, that's why we use the six zeros that's done then we need to set the denom variable click enter copy the main command to create our validator paste to the console enter the password and uh, checking that all have been created successful open our explorer and finding our name in the list and you will see testnet XLR. all looks fine that's great inside node statistical you will see heartbeat uptime but the uptime value is great for us because we ran node recently but this is normal and as i told you before we allocated in the inactive set to get the active site we need to get the minimum amount of the tokens 3002 tokens and our node will look like this uh, one in inactive set and that's all in this video. In the next step, we need to install the RPC nodes, but I will describe each of them in a separate video. Thanks for being attentive and stay safe. Bye.